from MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. We're underway. Wilson with a deep drop, throwing, intercepted Fulton, 45. Hit, sack! We have to just, as a group, be able to clean those things up, come together, and all execute and make plays. Tannehill fires for Batson, touchdown Titans! Henry! Give Henry, banging forward at left guard, touchdown Titans! The only thing that matters is, is Sunday, what you do and perform on on game day. We'll lick the wounds, you know, get in there, watch film, um, you know, create the mistakes and we'll move on. With the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, I'm Mike Keith. We welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show from St. Thomas Sports Park. Titans coming off an overtime loss at MetLife Stadium to the Jets, 27 to 24. Mike, this team has been hard at work, everybody hard at work over the last 48 hours to put that one in perspective and in the rear view mirror. Yeah, I mean, everybody's disappointed when we lose. I mean, we put a lot into it and we have high expectations and we're disappointed, but you have to move on. This league does not wait for anybody. Uh, there's no pity. They don't care how many guys you have injured. They don't care how many you lost or when you lost or if you had to travel or how long you had to play. So we got to get back at it. We got to go on the road to Jacksonville and, you know, come in here and have a great week. Titans played nearly 70 minutes at the Meadowlands on Sunday. A lot of big plays in the game, starting with the first quarter in Mike Vrabel's six pack. Titans facing third down and 21. And it's the screen game. Just how you draw it up, third and 21. You'd like to <laughs> not be there. But, uh, you know, the, here you see Ben getting that first block, and then there's always guys with extra effort blocks. Uh, you can see those guys down the field right there. Uh, Chet Rogers going and trying to find somebody that really springs us there for, you know, the extra gain and, and being able to get 27 yards on, you know, 28 yards on third and 21. But it all starts up front. It starts up with the timing and then being able to get some extra blocks downfield. And uh, we did hit some good screens yesterday. Put in a lot of work on the screen game. We have. We've worked at it hard. And, you know, it's good to see it pay off. Defense gets a takeaway in quarter number two. First interception of the year for Christian Fulton. Well, you can see he's staying square here. They come out of the play action pass. We'd like to have more transition. But he stays square at the top of the route. Um, Corey slips a little bit and, and Christian slides in there. We got to do a better job of getting some blocks so that maybe we can go score. Uh, but it was, you know, it was a huge turnover for us in the game and, and we started out how we wanted to. You know, we just got to, you know, turn these turnovers into points. We got to go score and, and get touchdowns and not field goals. But that was a great catch there and great play by Christian. It's 9 7 at the end of the first half. Big series for the New York Jets. They have third down in Titans territory at the 41. Big play for Harold Landry. Well, and they quick snapped us too. You know, they came out and they got on the ball and just pulled it. And you know, you could see us working the games and, and, and Harold being able to slither in there and, and doing a nice job. And there comes Ola and everybody else. So, you know, we were ready to go. We had them covered. Uh, we got the pressure that we needed, and it was a huge uh, momentum uh, builder for us to be able to to to, to stop that that poor special teams punt that we had. Uh, it was a sudden change. You know, they took it on on our side of the field and. You know, we didn't give him any points and, and made him punt. Third quarter, Titans go back to the screen game for more Jeremy McNichols. He finishes the day with eight catches for 74 yards. Second big screen here. Yep, and again, you're going to see, you know, the, the, the linemen get a, getting this thing started. You know, Ben gets out in front of it, just enough there. There goes Roger, the effort that Roger has down the field, you know, springing him. And, and again, that's those are huge plays for us. You know, we have to create some X plays and, you know, there's a great understanding when guys are blitzing, but there's the, the hugger, that hug rusher right there that's coming on, on Jeremy, and Ben gets enough of them right there uh, to get him back inside and then get it back on his landmark where, where Roger's running and we're trying to get extra blocks downfield. Titans fall behind as we go to the fourth quarter, 10-9. to nine. Sensational 75-yard drive to answer, 
And who was leading the way? Well, of course, it was number 22. Yeah, it Derrick didn't Henry. take very long. We got on the ball. We hit some plays. Uh, that was a well-blocked play. You know, Derrick's into the second level. Um, you know, you can see there's there's not much action there in the hole. Guys are working, and we just finish here uh, and trying to finish longer than the guy with the ball. There's Brew getting Mosley, uh, and we get it down to the one. Next play, Titans going to put it in. Where else are you going to go? Well, you're going to go to Derrick Henry, of course. And Derrick Henry, who leads the NFL in rushing, is able to take it into the end zone. He is. And, and we get the big fella, you know, we go back on the ball, and, and the guys are able to get a push, and, and we're not going to be able to get them all. And Derrick's able to, to kind of score and, and push the pile in there. And, you know, I think he knew exactly where he needed to go and what he needed to do there from his demeanor. You know, downhill run is bread and butter for us here. And, you know, straight ahead, no fair dodging. Yeah, absolutely. Derrick Henry takes it in. Titans trail late in the game, 24 to 17. Defense does an outstanding job getting the ball back for the offense. The Titans drive down inside the five, and it's a pretty play to Batson. Well, I, I appreciate the, the execution, um, the, the, the scheme, you know, that we put together. You know, caught them off guard a little bit there, and, and, and Ryan and, and, and Cam executed. That's a difficult snap to get, just the timing of it. Uh, we got it set up, and. You know, we practiced it throughout the week and, and, and we were able to call on it on a critical situation. Cameron Batson's second catch of the year, his second career touchdown as well. In overtime, big play for the Jets. They have third and goal at the one. If they score, the game's over. Danico Autry says no. Just the effort for him and the recognition to get out there and, and guys are running, you know, and, and to get us there, um, you know, to, to get it on the one. There was some great effort by some D linemen that were getting down there. and. You know, this capped it off and gave us an opportunity to, to keep playing. How do you balance those sorts of positives we saw with the, the disappointing result? Well, there's a lot. You know what I mean? Again, I told our football team, like, we're, we're third in the league in, in first downs. We're, we're fifth in, in, in first downs allowed defensively. You know, we just have to not give up big plays, and we got to start scoring touchdowns when we get in the red zone. Uh, a lot of things in there. We started the game really how we wanted it. We ran a lot of plays, and they didn't run very many. And it was 9 nothing, but... You know, if we can get some touchdowns there, that, that really puts us in a, in a great situation. We'll come back and take a look at the Titans' next opponent, the Jacksonville Jaguars, when the Mike Vrabel Show continues after this. Next up for the Titans, it's a trip to TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars, their opportunity to play in the AFC South against you guys. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. We, we got to get back on track. You know, we went up there, put a lot into that game, uh, but, but traveling down to Jacksonville um, is a division game on the road. You know, we got to get healthy. We got to lick our wounds. We got to put this one behind us, and, and we got to be uh, be great this week. All right, let's talk about the Nissan keys to victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mike Vrabel providing this insight via our friends at Nissan. And key number one, effort and finish. Just trying to get back to the basics. You know, we're just trying to get back to the basics. We lost a close, tough game, um, physical game, long game. Trying to get back to the basics and just get back to, to doing what we do, effort and finish. Uh, putting it at the top uh, and just really taking care of our attitude and our demeanor. All right, key number two from head coach Mike Vrabel in the Nissan Keys segment, fundamentals. That's it. Again, this is all going to be about the basics. And when, you know, you think that it's something more, the, the, the fundamentals are going to help us with the execution. Told the team, you know, a bunch of great effort without execution is just a bunch of guys running around there trying to go really hard. And we're trying to have execution but I do believe that the fundamentals, the blocking, the tackling, uh, catching the ball, running routes, all those things, protecting, uh, pass protection, all those things, the fundamentals is, is going to make the difference. All right, finally, let's take a look at the final Mike Vrabel Nissan key to victory. Preparation in all three phases. Yep, show up here with a great attitude, great demeanor, willing to work, willing to improve. Uh, focus on the things that we didn't do well and fix them and, and get ready to go down there and win. So the bottom line with that is whoever plays, regardless of the injury situation, if they focus on those three things, they can be a winning yeah, player yeah, for you on Sunday. You know what I mean? Just trying not to make it, you know, overdo it. Just trying to focus on, on what things that we believe in that are going to win consistently. And, uh, 
you know, there's no guarantees in this league, but I felt like those are great places to start this week. And the Delta Dental, you guessed the Titan, Titan is a perfect example of those three Nissan keys. I let's, can't wait. Let's take a look as we go to break. He puts all of those things into perspective, this guy does. We'll tell okay. you. We'll tell you who it is and see if Mike Vrabel knows who it is. Can you guess this Titan from Delta Dental? Coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show. Delta Dentals, can you guess this Titan for Mike Vrabel? He had some time during the break. I think, no, actually, I know that that beautiful smile is Danico Autry. Wow. From Abemarle, North Carolina, is it Danico Autry? It is indeed. Speaking of effort and finish and fundamentals and It's playing, like we queued it up. We teed I it know, up. I know. I know. I, I told him when he came here, I said, I'm so excited you've signed here, Danico, because now we don't have to play against Absolutely. you anymore. <laughs> That's why we got him. That's why. Just been a real pleasure to coach. He's always wanted to try to do um, exactly the things that we're coaching him and teaching him. Uh, and, and I think he's just getting better. You know, I think he's just getting better. I mean, he's had a really good games and he impacted some plays. And, and I think he's just going to keep getting better for us. And I, I think, I, I hope that he likes it here because we love having him here. Well, the thing about him, too, is that's a guy who had to work awfully hard to make it in the National Football League, and to see his success is special. I, I share uh, his story um, with, with our football team, you know, starting out in junior college at East Mississippi, going to Mississippi State, undrafted, Raiders to the, to the Colts, and we're, we're glad we finally got him before uh, you know, he finished his tour. Yeah, Danico Autry, keep doing good things for the Tennessee Titans defense as the season moves on. When we come back, time for the Titans Files. Amy Wells standing by on the Mike Frazier Show. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. Coaches are often hard on the players that they expect the most out of. And when they're willing to compliment them, they know it's a job well done. Well, in this case of the Titans Files, Amy Wells turns to a coach to talk about one of his star pupils, and he's thrilled to give the good words. That's a good rep, good communication. Here we go. Face, 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 face. Shane Bowen is in his first season as the Titans defensive coordinator. As a walk-around coordinator, Bowen no longer has the responsibility of coaching a single position. But for the first three years on staff, Bowen was in charge of the outside linebackers. Better with that footwork yesterday, on you? How's your, how's your focus on your get-off and all that stuff in this third down deal? That's why when it came time to talk about Harold Landry, we went straight to Shane Bowen. And he was glad to talk about one of the Titans' most reliable performers. Harold Landry is, he's a professional. He's competitive. He wants to do great. He wants to do great things. He works every single day to improve. He's always looking for something to get his game better. He never says boo about what we ask him to do. We ask a lot of them, not always things he should want to do, right? But doesn't bat an eye at it. Ultimate team guy. His growth as we go as a pass rusher, like just continuing to stress to him like, it ain't all about the fastball. Like we gotta be able to counter and you can set it up sometimes, right? And I think he's learned, I think he's learned to kind of how to rush where it's not always all speed all the time. You see him working some things. One thing he's still gotta continue to add to his arsenal, but I think he understands who he is too. And that helps him find success in all those different roles. When he's out there, I know what I'm getting, right? which that's, that's what you want. You never want to have somebody out there that you're not sure what you're going to get. But really glad he's a part of this piece. And I think he's coming along, developing a little bit more as a leader as this thing goes too. So here's what we know about Harold Landry. He's led the Titans in sacks the last two years. He plays the run and the pass with equal intensity. In his time as a starter, he's played about 90% of all defensive snaps. But we don't know much else about Harold Landry because he doesn't really like to talk about himself. 
So we asked defensive coordinator Shane Bowen to give us some nuggets about Landry that we might not know. I would say Harold Landry is very intellectual. Like he is very well thought out, has an answer for everything. He's got a great personality. He can cut it up with all the guys, but he is, he's a, he's a very smart kid who can think levels beyond probably what he should at times, right? And at times as a hindrance, I always tell him like, hey, Harold, like, Cut the thinking out, man. It's time to go. Like, don't overthink this stuff. Like, we got to go play. I think there's a lot of potential still in him. I really do. I mean, you saw flashes in 19. Last year, obviously, wasn't probably as good as he would have liked. But again, it's not always all about numbers in terms of sacks and some of that. Like, a lot of pressures, a lot of other ways he's affecting the quarterback by what he does. He works his Bud off in the off season. He's always ready to rock and roll. It's a matter of us finding ways to keep him fresh throughout the year, keep him ready to go. And I'm excited for what he might do this season. When you think about Harold Landry, that's a guy you just like to watch play. Yeah, that was a great piece. You know, that was some uh, really good thoughts there by Shane and and obviously Amy. And I know Harold's not going to say that much about himself, and she probably chose wisely to go to someone else and. Uh, he's been a great uh, member of our team. Really appreciate him been, being here. You can coach him hard. Nothing really affects him. You know, not only does he play with great effort, um, but, it, but he also is very becoming much more instinctive. And you see him making some really instinctive plays and a lot of plays all over the field for us. Good stuff. When we come back, speaking of the team, watch what the Titans community team is doing right now and see how they're winning big by helping out a lot of people. That's next on The Mike Brable Show. You may know a lot about the Titans football team, but you don't know a lot about the Titans community impact team. Well, this is a part of the organization that we're really proud of. And so meet the Titans community impact team in this Inside the Titans segment. I'm Tina Tuggle, Vice President of Community Impact for the Tennessee Titans. Josh Corey, I'm the Senior Manager of uh, Football Outreach and Community Impact. So uh, right out of college, I worked on the football side of the organization. So having grown up playing football my entire life, you know, I always kind of envisioned a career centered around sports and, and football and uh, just didn't know where my fit was until I was able, in, you know, to be a part of something bigger than myself that really makes a difference. One of the most valuable parts of the success we have in the Tennessee Titans community and the work that we do in the Community Impact Department is because of the extreme involvement from Amy Adams Strunk, our controlling owner. When you see everyone coming together, the Tennessee Titan family is there for you. You're gonna see a lot of us doing what we can to ease your burden. She wants to make sure that when we are working to serve our neighbors, we're very intentional in the work that we do. Yeah, so here we are in Waverly looking around at some of the damage from the flood to their facilities. And uh, we're glad to be here today, even if we can play a small part in uh, getting uh, these kids back out on the field. And so when we learned about the devastating floods, we knew we had to do something. It's not that we're serving others, it's we're serving the members of our community because we're a part of that community. So as a Titans fan myself, it's really neat to see the organization like helping the community and of course helping the football program and everything that they're doing. And... Waverly hosts White House at Nissan Stadium. End zone, touchdown, Tigers! What a high school football game. This is what Nashville does, is we, we help out our neighbors uh, who are in need, and we consider ourselves at the Titans to be leaders in this community. And so as leaders in this community, uh, that requires that we, we lead in, in times of need. What happens to them you know, happens to us. What's important to them is important to us. What, what affects them affects us. And so we have those very general things we do that everyone is familiar with, like the game day drives, feeding the homeless under the Jefferson Bridge when we partner with Bridge Ministries, the Habitat for Humanity, which is a great partner. But then there are also those areas that don't happen every day, but we know we can partner and make a difference in those spaces. 
Obviously, with my background, um, some of my favorites are the work that we do with the youth of the high school football across the state of Tennessee. All of you here, I'm a former high school coach, uh, so I've sat in those seats before. I know the struggles. And just being a part of the community that raised me, the way the Tennessee Titans have embraced the Tennessee community and the way the community embraces the Tennessee Titans is something that I will forever be proud and grateful to be a part of. That does it for this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. Remember, Titans Jags Sunday at noon. We're on the air on 104.5 The Zone and Titans radio stations beginning at 11 a.m. For the head coach, Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us. Tighten up.